Hey, what's up YouTube? What's going on? In today's new video, what I wanted to share with you guys is a few things that I've learned about the facet joints recently. And I also want to share a bit of my personal experience dealing with facet joint osteoarthrosis. Now, before I jump into this video, I just want to mention that I just recently published an article on my website, which specifically talks about my personal experience dealing with this issue and also preventative strategies for leading to the development of facet joint osteoarthrosis. Many times people will be performing exercises with poor technique, under heavy load, and by doing this repeatedly over time, this could lead to an issue like this developing. So if you guys want to see a very in-depth article, go to my website, check that out. But in this video, I'm also going to be touching on this issue as well. So to begin, we have our spine model here. So the facet joints here are located on the back of the spine. So there are these little points here that stick out and they form the facet joint on the back of the spine. And so there is a set of them on each vertebra and what they do is they play a role in movement of the spine. So they allow for flexion, extension, a little bit of lateral flexion and rotation, but they also play an important role in the way that forces are administered through the spine. So one thing to understand though is that when we move into lumbar extension, so I'll show you guys what lumbar extension first of all is. So if you move into lumbar extension, specifically hyperextension, what ends up happening is you'll start cranking on the facet joints. And that's when our facet joints are loaded the most in terms of a compressive force. So often you'll see people going to hyperextension or lumbar extension during a shoulder press, maybe a bench press exercise, or maybe even a hyperextend on a deadlift. And that can be very problematic if they repeatedly do this over time because they're just really beaten up and cranking on their facet joints. Now, if you were to take an athlete, maybe like a tennis player, hockey player, basketball player, and you combine that poor training with their sport, you're just asking for, you're just asking for problems to develop or arise. Because athletes themselves are constantly engaging in these extension positions because that's required by their sport. But if you go repeat these motions and movements in the weight room under heavy loads, that's where problems will arise. So it's very important specifically as an athlete or if, for an individual that's just looking to prevent these issues from developing to limit or avoid shooting into lumbar extension under compressive load. And often, like I mentioned, you'll see this during a shoulder press, maybe a bench press, or maybe even a deadlift for that matter, or during a Superman exercise, which is a classic uh, rehab exercise that is now outdated but it's that exact motion that could lead to degenerative changes developing here so point being avoid lumbar extension under load now another thing that i want to mention though too is that if someone may ha have problems with sitting for prolonged periods of time and maybe they have some degenerative change with the facet joints there could be a, a, a plausible reason for this so what ends up happening during prolonged sitting is that the disc will slowly flatten out over time and fluid will expel from the disc. So the disc will, as you can see guys, is flattening out. And what ends up, what's up happening now is that force, forces that are administered on the disc will now be shifted to the facet joint. So the facet joints now have to compensate for this change in the mechanics of the spine. So the facet joints will take more stress on and they may get beat up a little bit more over time if you're always sitting or in this position of prolonged sitting for a long period of time, such as in a desk worker or you're working at an office eight hours a day. So yeah, if you want relief, it would be important to get up, move around and avoid just those prolonged static loading positions. If you're someone that's maybe dealing with some degenerative issues at the facet joints, Another thing to keep in mind too is that as you lose disc height, the same thing applies. Loading is going to shift to the facet joint because there's a loss of disc height. So now there's going to be compensation, more forces on the facet joints by this compensation occurring, more stress, and it's going to get, the facet joints are going to get beat up over time as a result of that loss of disc height or degenerative changes to the spinal disc. So that's just another thing that I wanted to mention and something that I've learned recently with regards to the uh, the facet joints themselves and the reason I just wanted to make this video is because this is an issue that I've dealt with it's been more of a secondary condition uh, that I would say I'd always say the primary kind of condition 
or issue that I've always dealt with is the L5-S1 disc herniation. But the facet joints are something that from time to time may cause me some issues, especially if I'm not careful or if I'm in a prolonged uh, static loading position like sitting or if I try to do heavy squats. It could be a bit of a struggle and sometimes I can get discomfort. So what I find kind of provides me with relief is just getting up, moving around, laying on the floor, decompressing or getting a good night's sleep. One thing that I do find that significantly helps is sleep. If I'm lacking on sleep, I could find that, uh, I find sometimes that my symptoms may be a little bit more harsh at times, uh, specifically right after waking up. So those are just a few things I wanted to mention with regards to the facet joints because I feel like it's one um, kind of area that doesn't really get talked about a lot. It's not something that I've really mentioned. It's more of an extension based issue than anything because as people repeatedly go into extension, so they continuously go into that extension position under compressive load, that's where problems are likely going to arise if they repeatedly do this over time under compressive load. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of mention that in this video guys. Now I did mention in the beginning of this video that I wrote an article about this whole topic. It's in much more detail than what I've explained in this video. And you'll find a lot of lot more information about this topic. Uh, you'll find a lot of research studies with regards to talking about the facet joints and how maybe a loss of disc height or degenerative facet joints will absorb more compressive force uh, because the degenerative facet joints will now create some, maybe some form of instability within the spine. So this may alter the way forces are administered and you might get more loading now on a degenerative facet joint. So bunch of stuff in that article, go check it out on my website. And if you have any questions, guys, comments, or there's any type of video that you would like me to, to kind of cover, talk about, feel free to leave a comment below. And with that being said, we're going to wrap up this video guys. And I hope you enjoyed this. And like I said, I just wanted to share a few things about the facet joints that I've learned. All the best guys. Hopefully, you learned something and with that being said, take care.